Thank you. I'm glad to be here today. I'm listed as a private citizen. I will call myself a citizen of the world um, because uh, I think um, I have been spending the last 35 years of my life trying to do something to prevent cancer in the world and I think it has not been a big success. I am afraid to see that in the past 30 years the number of cancer cases doubled in the world and whatever I could do as French NIH researcher or even the, during the 22 years I worked at the International Agency for Research on Cancer which is part of World Health Organization including nine years as a unit chief of epidemiology for cancer prevention, what I really wanted to do, two years as acting chief for a program for cancer control of WHO, things have not really improved. Of course, we have seen cancer increases because the population increased in the world that we know we can account for it, that it's aging, that's fine, we also know to account for it. But even when you look at childhood cancer, it keeps on increasing. And then I tend to be convinced more and more that when we look for causes of cancer, including in children, we really have to take seriously the environment we live in. And that has changed in a huge amount in the past 50 years in terms of chemical carcinogen, but also in terms of physical agents. And I think EMF, ELF, all these fields have exploded. We are now living in a place on a planet where soon there will not be anyone unexposed which will make it difficult, in fact, to demonstrate uh, the fact that EMF exposure is a carcinogen. How is epidemiology going to manage when everyone will be exposed? Of course, we will try to do it in a more detailed way with the issue of dose response, which maybe will be providing some information. But I wish good luck to the epidemiologists of today for being able to conduct, for example, cohort studies of human subjects with unexposed. I don't know where they are going to find the unexposed. In way, we have to rely with lace on a plan. And for example, but I wish epidemiologists for being able to field in epidemiology, most of the interesting results come from case control study. I know the results are very often presented at no overall increase, comparing exposed to unexposed, but I think we really have to focus on the only group of interest in terms of carcinogenicity, which are the ones who have been the most heavily exposed, either in terms of intensity of exposure, but most importantly, in terms of duration. And there, almost all case reference studies which have been done on this topic have found statistically significant for most of them increased risk. That's the case of the Nordic stu uh, studies done by Ardell and his colleagues. That's the case of the Interphone topic. study for people who were exposed more than 1,600 something hours. But it's also the case of some studies presented as negative, for example, the Cephalo study done on children aged 7 to 19 with brain tumors. And even there, the results are not statistically significant except for one, the most heavily exposed, but all the effect measures are greater than one, so the risk exists. And we should not ignore that. So if we cannot do epidemiology, then we will be left with experimental study. And that's why I'm very happy to comment here the NTP study. Um, there you can have an exposed group. And in fact, one of my comments to the NTP study is that maybe the unexposed groups should be larger 
to avoid the use of historical control, but also from a statistical point of view, they should be larger than each of the exposed group and maybe they will provide somewhat more stable results. So I just wanted to put a slide I got this morning from the UK, it's an in-press study, looking at descriptive epidemiology, because if we cannot do etiological studies looking for the causes of cancer in humans, we will be able to look and follow up the statistics. And that comes from the UK. The dark uh, graph, one going up, is glioblastoma. That's the worst form of brain, of brain cancer, the most aggressive, and it's going up from 75 to nowadays. Do we really want to see it keeping going up? It will. Nothing is being done. It will take a long while if we take preventive measure to make it going down. Of course, it's only a correlation time period, so that doesn't prove anything. But on the other hand, I think at least the question has to be asked. Same thing for pituitary tumors in Sweden, that comes from Ardell. And to get back and finish on the NTP study, I think it's really excellent that this study has been done because it's a very large, well-conducted, methodologically sound study. No complaint about all of that. Of course, some questions may remain on the choice of exposure. And one point I want to make is that if we now have to rely on experimental study for the future, then we should really hurry up when there is a new technology being launched to do this kind of study. The question of a 5G, are we going to expose the whole population before testing it in animals in a careful way? Experimental study can provide some answers in two years. I know two years nowadays, oh, it's a century. But nevertheless, if that could avoid unnecessary exposures to be put on the market, it will be good for the health of the populations. The differences, the fact that there are differences between rats and mice, males and females, some things which are statistically significant and other not. It has to be taken into consideration, but I prefer to look at the fact of the consistency of the result in between what we know from clinicians, from clinical studies, from EPI, from what we see in the mice and in the rat in different studies. All studies have limitations. But when they keep on pointing in the same direction, we really have to take it into account. So I think that the NTP study provides more evidence of carcinogenicity. The Ramazzini also had something more. And we need to have more on the newer frequencies which are going to be used. And it would have been so great to have it before the world population is going to be exposed to it. Why am I worried about that? Well, because I'm a doctor, after all, and I never forgot the Hippocratic oath. First, do no harm. Primum non nocere. And I think just as a person, whoever you are, I mean, all people, including the industrial people who produce cell phones or whatever else, do not want to, to do harm to people. So we really have to take into account even small sentinels indicator. Ten years ago, with David Savon Schreiber, who is now dead, we wrote an appeal, it was one of the first ones, and there were many more, saying to people, be cautious when using your cell phone. And in fact, I could have the same answer that, no, I didn't change my way of using a phone over the years, because already 10 years ago, we were telling people, keep the phone away from your body, try not to use it. If you have access to a landline, use a landline, text rather than talk. 
So there it was, and we've already thought at that time we had enough data. Ten years later, I'm afraid to see so many more data has accumulated and we still have to repeat these simple things. So now I tend to think precaution is even past. We should really enter into prevention. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, questions for Dr. Castro? Thank you.